Hello, I'm Jack Koenig with Graco Industrial Lubrication Equipment, and today I will be demonstrating a couple of different ways to wire up the alarm outputs on the G3 SP pump, and specifically the G3 SP with the CPC5 power cable. What I'm going to show you today will not work on the AC units or any of them with DIN. It's going to be the DC units that have the CPC5 that this video applies to. The first thing to understand on the CPC5 is what each color wire is for. We have our, our red for positive DC, our negative ground or negative DC, and then the orange is still a remote manual run button circuit. Now the green and white are what are unique on this pump. The unique thing about what we did in the G3SP is included a separate alarm output and a separate low level output. So if you want to have a panel of lights, you can have one for low level and one for fault or alarm. The white wire is the one that is your alarm. The green wire is the low level. But let's take a look with these lights that I have wired up here at how these lights actually behave on each circuit. This green light is just my system power light. I have it hooked up to red and black and it's just parallel with the pump and it doesn't really mean the pump is running, it just shows that the pump has power. This is something that most people probably aren't going to bother with, it's just that I have three colors of lights so I thought it would be interesting to include the green light just to show that power is going to the pump. So as you can see when the display lit up at that same time is when my green light turned on. So now let's look at the behavior on each of these lights as we experience some faults. So again, the green light is just going to stay on as long as there's power. That's not indicating a fault. To start a manual run, we just take the orange wire and touch it to the black. We also obviously could have just pressed the button here and made it run. But now we're going to start getting a low level in a few seconds here. Here we go, we have our low level warning. So this is not a fault yet, the pump is still running, but with the warning, both of these lights have lit up. So both the red and the amber are solid. So red is my alarm or fault, and then yellow is my low level. So as we can see, both of them are lit up solid right now. And let's fast forward through time to get to the point where this actually goes to a low level fault. Okay, it took a few minutes, but not the four minutes that it would take to get a cycle fault. We can see by these lights that the low level light is flashing and then the alarm light is flashing. So we have a low level fault and we can see here now the red light is flashing but the low level light is still solid so that's the difference is that the low level is solid all the time and the red flashes when it gets to a fault but is solid on a warning or a pre-alarm or whatever you want to call it there are options shown in the manual to change these behaviors but just for this video I'm going to stick with the default behavior so that's the low level let's take a look at cycle fault and see how that differs now let's see how the lights behave when the pump shows a cycle fault. I have this pump laying on its side because it's almost empty and this way with the paddle in there it will think it has oil or grease in it when it actually doesn't. So now I'll touch the orange to the black again and here's our manual run and let's see what happens in four minutes when it does not get its cycle. All right, gravity had its desired effect on our low level paddle. So we have a cycle fault, but no low level fault and no low level warning at this point. And what we can see here is there's nothing showing on the yellow light at all because it's not a low level. So the flashing red light tells us that there's a fault. And in this case, the screen will tell us that it is a cycle fault, the ERCY for cycle fault. If you happen to somehow both run out of oil 
and or grease and you also get a cycle fault at the same time it will show both of these on here but the point that I want to show here is that on the low level warning or the pre-alarm this light was solid when it got to a low level fault then it started flashing and it also flashes on a cycle fault so what that means for our remote manual run device is that we can hook this circuit up to the remote manual run button and use it as a remote fault and then you could either completely skip the low level signal or you could get a little LED standalone light like this and have a separate low level light that you could then put on your dashboard and label. So let's hook it up now the way I just described it with the remote manual run device that we sell for the other G3 pumps and see how that works. Now that we have an understanding of what's the same and what's different between the alarm output and the low level output, let's take a look at how this could behave on one of the remote manual run devices. This is the pump that was previously in cycle fault and when it comes back on it's still in cycle fault. It says ERCY, the timer is counting up so we know it has a fault and the light is flashing. So let's clear that fault. And now the remote, remote manual run button is connected. So we'll press that and see what happens when it gets the low level now. One thing about what I have going on here is with the G3 pump on the CPC power cable, the important thing to understand is that the only two wires that you have to hook up are the red wire and the black wire. With the CPC5, if you hook up red and black with red to positive and black to negative, the pump will run. All these other things we're doing are just for the external feedback that we're trying to get out of this five wire cable. So on this one, I do have a yellow light wired up here. You don't have to have this light to make it work. I just have that connected to the green wire so that we are gonna get a low level signal out of that. But again, the system doesn't need it to operate. This is just a feature that you can add if you want. Something important on these alarms is that they actually send a negative signal. So when you're hooking up an LED light, your negative lead goes to your in this case green wire and then I need to hook my positive up to the red wire so I'm gonna cheat and just squeeze that in my gator clip hook my black back up all right powers coming back on and now we should have a working light here there we go now we have a yellow light to indicate the warning and a solid light on the push button to indicate the warning as well and then we look here, we have our flashing lights on the warning and the low level and it says ERLL. So now we'll give it a couple more minutes and we will see the other behavior of this light when it goes to a fault. Here we go. We still have a solid light on the low level and now we have the fault light flashing. And so we know that there's a fault. If this yellow light wasn't here, we wouldn't know which fault, but it would be enough to tell the operator that the system is not running because if this light is flashing, the pump's not pumping. So then you can go out to the display and see which fault it is. The yellow light could be a convenience thing that you could add and label it lube system low level or greaser low level or whatever you want to call it but this isn't even a Graco part this is just something that you could add you know this could be hooked up to an audible alarm or whatever but ultimately if you want to just keep it simple you can just take the G3SP and connect it to the remote manual run device and you'll still have well remote manual run won't work till I clear the fault but when you're not in fault you have a working remote manual run button you have a working fault light. You just don't have a separate light for low level unless you connect one. So that's 
functionality. Let's look at the actual wiring now before we wrap things up. Let's get a close up look at the back of the remote manual run device now. And as we take things apart, we'll be able to see what the different functions are. So first, let's just unhook the positive power and the negative power. These guys were just some gator clips that I have running back to the bench power supply. Next, this is the optional wiring for the low level signal that I had on this yellow light. This blue wire is the negative for the LED and the yellow is the positive for the LED. The, the negative needs to be connected to the signal wire on the are coming from the pump and then the positive wire is actually the one that's common and not switched so you end up having to splice this into your red power line and I just pinched that under the gator clip to make it quick so let's just remove that now and get that out of the way and if you were going to keep this really simple you could still just clip off your green wire just like what we do with the G3 Max and the G3 Pro where this isn't used then it's basically wired like a G3 Max and a G3 Pro except for one exception. I have the white wire and the red wire reversed and that's why my light was red. If you look in the manual for the G3 Pro and the G3 Max or at what I've demonstrated before, when there's a fault for one of those pumps the light flashes green. This one's not going to flash green because I put it backwards. It's flashing red. If I wanted it to flash green, all I have to do is pull the white wire out and the red wire out and put them back the way they're supposed to be where red goes next to black. And white goes opposite the red and orange goes if I can get it to reach here, orange goes opposite the, the black because orange and black are the circuit for the manual run. White and red are the circuit for the light. If we power this up again, we'll have a green flashing light now instead of the red. But this is kind of the bare minimum of what you need in addition to having positive and negative connections to your battery or ignition coming in here. This is still pin number three here, which I've marked with the black marker so that I know where my black one goes. Then we put red next to it. And then opposite of black is where the orange goes and opposite of red is where the white goes. And it's that simple. You can hook up a G3 SP to a remote manual run device, just like any other G3. It's just that you lose the indication of the pump running. You only get a light when the pump is in fault or when it's in warning. Before we completely wrap things up, let's just revisit the wiring on the panel with the three LEDs and not using the Graco remote manual run device. The key takeaway is that your LEDs typically are polarity sensitive and so they have to be wired the right way in order for them to work. The confusing thing is that we basically do a positive common on these alarm circuits. So here I have my positive wire coming in from the pump and then this gator clip goes over to my bench power supply and then these are the three positive wires from my three LEDs over here. The, the, the blues are the negatives and these go to various places. The, the green light is again just going back here to the main, uh, to the main frame ground. So when I turn the, the power on, I get a green light even when the pump's not hooked up. That just says power is being sent to the cable really. And, and again, that's something that most people probably aren't even going to bother with. But if we look at both the, the uh, low level and the alarm wires, these are the ones where the negative actually has to go to the green or the white respectively in order to make this all work. Green and white hook up to negative. Here I don't have my orange hooked up to anything because that's the manual run circuit. You could put that on to just like a doorbell, any kind of 
push button or switch that you want to have it. Just make sure it's not a toggle switch that can stay closed. You want to have it be just something that's instantaneous where when you let it go, it opens the circuit again because if you leave that circuit closed, the pump will run all the time until it burns out. And that's not covered by warranty. So hopefully all of this has been helpful and cleared up confusion you've had. With all these wires running all over the place, it's easy to lose track of what's going on. But if you have any questions about wiring up your G3 SP or any other Graco pump, please reach out to us. We're always happy to hear from you.